car on the march to the police station, I believe. A lot of people speaking out for George Floyd here in Fullerton. Go around! Hey! Whoa, what are you doing, dude? Slow down! Hey, watch out for that asshole, guys. Turn around. There's a... Wow, that was nuts. Also, look at this piece of shit. Oh, 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 Hey, here comes the reinforcements right here. The bunch of pussies can't even take a couple of kids. And an old man with a microphone. Please leave the area. This is the Fulton Police Department. Please leave the area and do not block the intersection. Please go fuck yourself. This is the Fullerton Police Department. Need you to please leave the area and do not block the intersection from traffic.
They blew up his arm, his leg, his stomach, and hit him in the back. He never once faced the cops. I watched the cops sit there and lie and said my brother charged him with a knife. If my brother would have charged you with a knife, you would have shot him in his chest. You would have shot him in his face and in his head, not in his back. My brother never looked at the cop. So yeah, this is very personal. I'm standing with two other mothers who lost their kids to police brutality. My brother's name is on this side. That's why I'm holding this sign close to my heart. His name shouldn't be on his sign. His name, he should be here with me right now. I watched these cops stalk my house. The same cop that killed my brother has stalked my house. He's giving me fix-it tickets on my car. Music too loud. My kid's standing in my yard after 11 o'clock. You name it, the cop has harassed us. I've had to go to the mayor and had to move my mother two times due to the cop's harassment. He harassed me so bad at a protest one time that I had half a person stick up for me. He followed me around the protest trying to give me a dismissal order. Any of the other cops there could have gave it to me. No, the cop that killed my brother was trying to give it to me. This pain is so real. My love is to George Floyd's mom and their family, his sisters, his two little kids that will never see their dad again. I've been out here with Kelly Thomas, his family, and been part of Kelly Thomas's army since 2012. I still come out here and feed the homeless over here. My son comes out here regularly on his birthdays. He gives up his birthdays to come out here and spend it with Kelly and all his friends. Because this is how close to home this is for us. A lot of you guys are just here as support but tonight when I go home, I'll be lighting a birthday cake for my brother who's dead. I'll be sitting there next to his ashes and crying. It's just a memory to me. It's hard. It's really hard. I thank you guys for all your support. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Donna Savito Nelson. And this is my son, Joel. Um, well, I'm here because of George Floyd, because it is very personal to a lot of us. And it happens every day. Um, my son was killed in July, July 22nd, 2012. 
the same year, 12 months prior, there was eight other young men that were killed. The day before my son was killed, another young man was killed. Um, this, uh, you know, it doesn't stop. I, we keep, you know, we hear on the news about another one and, you know, there's uprising and we think something's going to happen. And, you know, it's very important for people to come out and, you know, su you know support the families and, you know, see what the cops are doing. And then, you know, I get really angry because I hear, well, not all cops are bad. There's only some bad apples. And it's like, okay, well, why don't they... You know, why don't they stand up and, you know, turn into bad ones? But that never happens. Um, and, you know, it's really hard for me to talk about this because, um, you know, just to live life every day, you kind of have to, like, stuff it in. But, you know, when, when you see it all around you, it's kind of hard. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad you're here and I'm glad people are paying attention. But it... The attention needs to go on, like, you know, because this isn't going to stop. I kind of had an argument with my with my husband this morning. He's like, well, this is the last straw. And it is, is it really the last straw? Like, when is it going to happen again? How many times did it happen since George Floyd? Like, you know, it, it, it still happens. It's still going to keep happening. So it's up to us to make it stop. And, yeah, that's all I have to say right now. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. God bless you. So here we are in Fullerton. Big protest. Protesting the killing of George Floyd. As you can see a lot of people Say his here. Name. Signs. Say his name. Say his name. George Floyd. I'm with um, Pray for justice for all. Uh, At the end of time. unjust killings, please share the video. Do join Homeless Advocates for Christ on Facebook. Also, check out Racial Justice Warriors for Christ. That's my other new Facebook group. Feel free to join that as well. Pray for justice in America for all races and all places. And um, I'm thankful to see so many that are here to stand for justice. We really need it. But anyways, just wanted to share this video with you all. We're going to continue to be here just to support the family of George Floyd and so many others that have lost loved ones due to police brutality. We're going to get to that. That Christ would uh, rule and reign in each heart. That's really what we need. Thanks for your prayers support, everyone, and we God bless you all. Just keep Good morning. Uh, I just want to add some thoughts I had regarding George Floyd. Some people are wondering why is all the looting taking place? Um, that shouldn't happen. So we'll start from the beginning, I guess you could say. Here's a picture of slave ships, right? Now people will put on the boats way back when and from that kind of beginning in the country you have people that are oppressed still a lot of an economic inequality still obviously a lot of racism a lot of tensions still um, of course the KKK all that stuff still around so um, there's a lot of problems in our country right now, and there's a lot of animosity and anger for the mistreatment of people. So um, I just wanted to add regarding uh, what should be done to bring change. Um, I think the public must demand that lie detector tests and psychological exams be given to all police currently, as well as the cadets coming in to make sure that they are not uh, a danger to society, right? The public really should demand that. And I think that public input uh, into the questions asked these officers should be included in the situation. 
<clears throat> Interestingly enough, I just read that the CIA and the FBI already used the lie detector test when they're interviewing people. So, uh, of course, we don't want any more crazy people with guns on the police force um, or racist people, whatever it is. Uh, and I know that Trump stated that when the, the looting starts, then the shooting starts. But I just saw a video where uh, calm protesters had her hands up in the air and an officer shot her, looks like with a rubber bullet. You know, and I think, of course, a lot of looting has been taking place in the corporate world for years. Uh, this is one, one quote uh, from Peter Gowan. He says, the uprise, uprising in response to George Floyd's murder by a Minneapolis police officer this week has led to predictable calls to condemn looting. But the real looting in our society comes from the military, the police, the pharmaceutical companies, private equity, the landlords, the real estate speculators, and the billionaires, not protesters against police brutality. Now, of course, there's a lot of truth to that. I'm not justifying looting, violence, and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, you keep kicking people, you're going to have a response, right? That maybe isn't going to be so pretty. So where is the church in all this? I think the church needs to be involved in speaking out. Um, and uh, I hope that and pray that uh, other believers will do that. And I'm ha having a prayer and protest, you could say, at Maxwell Park tomorrow, Saturday at noon. You guys are welcome to come. And um, it's not going to be uh, nothing violent, nothing like that. But just talking about the situation and praying and praying for change. I think prayer is one of the most powerful things if not the most powerful thing to bring change. That's why Jesus himself did it so much. And uh, I think this is a, this looting and, of course, burning down the police station. That's a response to systematic racism and classism and not a response to one event. Um, definitely it's time for a uh, major prayer for our nation. And, of course, Proverbs 31, 8 through 9 says that we should defend the rights of the poor and the needy. Um, so I encourage all to be involved in that. Um, I want to share a couple more pictures here. I want to share this one. So here is a picture with George Floyd's head being crushed. I've actually experienced something similar, but thankfully not the exact same thing. That's why I'm still alive. But the officer had his knee on my head, on the side of my skull. And that happened to me multiple times in Las Vegas. And this man died at 46 years old. I'm 46 years old. It's really heartbreaking, you know, and uh, he didn't have to die. And really, I understand why there's so much anger and tension and protest in our country. So some people don't under, understand it. I hope that'll help you understand it. <clears throat> Please do share the video. Do join Homeless Advocates for Christ on Facebook as well. It's my Facebook group. We've been fighting for the rights of the homeless for years. I've been going to city council meetings for years in different cities and I've been arrested many times for standing up for the rights of the homeless, as a lot of you already know, for street preaching even in Vegas. And um, I know firsthand experience the oppression of the legal system and uh, that needs to change you know so please again do share the video like subscribe and um, may God bless you all as you for his kingdom always bye bye one thing I forgot to add was this comment I left on Facebook yesterday I think it's worth repeating and what I said was in saying this I'm not condoning or supporting looting and violence since Christ is who I try to follow. That being said, I do believe a lawless system invites a lawless response. If the justice system refuses to hold murderous police accountable and continues to allow inequality of grotesque proportions, then it would seem lawlessness is the rule, not the exception. Yes, looting is a crime, but I do believe murder is much worse in God's book. In a lawless society, what more should we expect? Business may complain and point the finger at looters, but my guess is that if swift justice took place and murder charges were given to murderous officers 
and death penalties executed, businesses would likely still be intact. Are businesses demanding justice, or are they simply pointing the finger at looters, responding to a lawless system that threatens their very life? Just some thoughts I had. Hopefully soon more business leaders will demand liberty and justice for all. Let us pray for that, but I won't hold my breath. I'll continue to breathe and speak for God's people while I'm able, and only God knows how long that will be.